Reflexology is a natural drugless healing therapy that's increasing in popularity all around the world. Hello, my name is Lauren Slade and this is the Universal College of Reflexology. We've been providing reflexology training and certification worldwide for almost 22 years. If you're looking for a new career, then consider reflexology. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics is projecting an employment growth of 20.1% for allied healthcare fields, which includes reflexology, between the years 2012 and 2020. The following is an excerpt from our reflexology relaxation techniques videos in our online training program. This is a section that's how to perform reflexology relaxation techniques, which will teach you some of the basics that we use here at the college. Please enjoy. Relaxation techniques. All reflexology sessions incorporate relaxation techniques. The importance of these techniques cannot be overstated. Ultimate aim is to relax the client and encourage the healing processes of the body. Relaxation techniques may be used before, during or after a reflexology treatment. So we're going to go through the different relaxation techniques that we use in our foot reflexology manual here at the Universal College of Reflexology. First one we're going to demonstrate is called the side to side. Purpose is to loosen and relax the upper foot. I'm going to place the center of the palm of my hand on either side of the foot on the joint of the first metatarsal bone and the top of the fifth metatarsal bone. I'm going to kick and forth, back and forth. And we start this one off doing it nice and slowly. And then as I get far, you hear a gentle kind of a tapping sound on the top of the foot. And we just do that for a few moments. We then move over to the other foot and perform exactly the same. Center of my palm is on the top of the first metatarsal bone. Center of the palm of my other hand is on the top of the fifth metatarsal bone. Nice and gentle movement to start off. And then speed up. The next re relaxation is called metatarsal kneading. Its purpose is to relax the whole foot and the lower leg. How do we perform it? We make a fist and place the fist above the diaphragm line and below the shoulder line on the foot. The knuckles of my hand will fit in between the metatarsal bones on the foot, making a nice firm grip. My other hand is placed around, my thumb sits beside the big toe, and my fingers are loosely placed below the toes. I'm going to push with the fist to make the foot slightly spread apart, to spread apart these metatarsal bones, and fill my hand which is on the top. I'm going to relax the pressure with my fist and gently squeeze with the cupped hand. And I'm going to repeat that several times. Normally three times is sufficient to repeat that. And now we're going to perform the metatarsal kneading on the other foot. We're going to make a fist. Fist again is above the diaphragm line and below the shoulder line. The other hand is going to be cupped around the dorsal or top side of the foot. I'm going to push with my fist to make the foot spread out slightly and fill my cupped hand. And I'm going to release the pressure with the fist 
and gently squeeze with a cupped hand. And I'm going to repeat this several times. Note that it's a slow, gentle movement. Points to note. It's really important that once you, main, you place pressure here with your hand that you maintain the pressure on the plantar aspect of the foot. And always remember that it's your thumb with the toe. So your zone one for your thumb matches the zone one with your big toe. So when I push my fingertips are loosely coming around to the outside of the foot. Then when we do it with the other foot, you keep that same positioning. My thumb, zone one, relates to the big toe, zone one, of my fist. So it's at this position for the right foot, and then this position for the left foot. The next relaxation is the spinal twist. This stretches the longitudinal arch of the foot. How does it work? Well, we hold the medial edge of the foot over the waistline. One hand above the waistline, one hand below. The hand nearest the heel will stabilize the foot, and the hand nearest the toe will twist approximately three times, but that depends on the length or the size of the foot you're working with. Move the hands down the foot towards the toes and repeat the movement. Repeat this as many times as the foot will allow. Never twist the toes. So, to demonstrate, this is where the waistline is located. We have one thumb below the waistline, fingers loosely resting on the top. The other thumb above the waistline, again, fingers loosely resting on the top. My hand that's nearest the ankles is going to stabilize the foot. The hand that's nearest the toes is going to turn. One, two, three. We're going to move up towards the toes and do that. One, two, three. And then up towards the toes. One, two, three. This is a relatively small foot that I'm working on, so I can only perform that movement three times before I'm too close to the toes to do it again. If you're working with a foot which is much larger, you would continue on for as many times as you can do that movement, one, two, three, without actually working the toes. And then we're going to perform exactly the same move on the other foot. One thumb below the waistline, other hand above the waistline. And note that you're always working from the medial edge of the foot so that my fingers are working, placing out towards zone five or the lateral edge of the foot. My hand that's nearest to the ankle is stabilizing the foot. My hand that's nearest to the toes is going to twist the foot three times. Move down a little bit. My left hand is stabilizing. My right hand, one, two, three. Move down towards the toes, one, two, three. And you'll repeat this as many times as the foot will allow, remembering that you never twist the toes. For more information on the Universal College of Reflexology's Professional Foot Reflexology Practitioner Certification Program, please visit www.ireflexology.com. We offer combination learning, that's a combination of the online theory and also watching the videos in full that you've just seen a sample of, as well as offering practical hands-on classroom time. You learn at your own pace and review the techniques as often as you want. Reflexologists are in demand. For training and certification information, visit www.ireflexology.com or if you want, you can send me a personal email to lauren at ireflexology.com and I'll answer your questions. We look forward to welcoming you as a student in our next online class for professional foot reflexology practitioners.